Thank you so much for attending. Let's just do some quick introductions so I know who's on the call and you guys have an opportunity to meet each other as well. And we'll start with, actually, I've got a couple team members on here. I'll go ahead and start with Scott Smith. Hi, Scott. Bob Rogers. <laughs> Scott's on mute. Yeah. All right, Bob, you're up. Okay, can you hear me? I can. Okay. So there's six other people here with us. Uh, Ramona is here as well. Fantastic. Will you tell people a little bit about your company? Well, uh, we started Unpro Plus, started working on it in January uh, with a launch date of April 1. Uh, amongst all of the various uh, gun blogs that are uh, on the Internet, we believe and have evidence to indicate that there is no other uh, gun uh, blog as, as comprehensive as this one because this is literally a daily <clears throat> digital newspaper which goes obviously around the world. Um, we've had people respond to us from uh, Rome, uh, from uh, uh, the UK, from China, as well as, of course, across the United States. So we cover uh, most of the really important uh, categories <coughs> relative to guns. That is to say self-protection, home defense, uh, the shooting sports, as, such as the Olympics and so forth. Uh, and um, a lot of uh, daily gun news, more so than I think is found anywhere else on the web. So we try to be very um, uh, exclusive as to what we have. Now, we are a news portal as opposed to just you know one writer doing a blog and giving his thoughts, although we do have five writers who produce what I call custom content, and which, uh, as I understand it, the digital world calls organic content. Same difference one way or the other. Uh, in addition to a few other little original pieces of writing that appear on the site every day. We have a very large cache of archives. Uh, if uh, you were a, a viewer who thought they saw something uh, back in April but couldn't remember exactly what it was, except that it might have been about uh, self-protection. They can go to the self-protection uh, category and find exactly what they were looking for back in April. Fantastic. So that's kind of a thumbnail sketch of what we are and what we do. Fantastic. And um, we're excited to be able to work on this project. The new site is going to be absolutely gorgeous. It's definitely going to support your guys' mission. Thank you, Bob and Ramona, for visiting with us today and joining the webinar. I appreciate you guys. Go ahead and hit mute, and let's um, jump over to Warren with Astro Sheet Metal. Make sure that my phone's not muted. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Astro Sheet Metal is a 48-year-old family-owned manufacturing company in Irving, Texas. We bend shiny metal. Um, the reason that we are interested or the reason we're pursuing this is previously all of our people know an awful lot about manufacturing and we know how to sell to customers, but we know diddly squat about marketing and a presence on the web. So that is why we're dealing with, with this group. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Your new site is hot, hot, hot. Loving it. So this is their existing site, you guys. I think we're on probably a 30, maybe 60, but I think we're on a 30-day schedule to go live with their new site, which is absolutely gorgeous. Very, we're very impressive. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Let's, um, how about Ms. Pat Fioretti, BFS in law? I know nothing. <laughs> Kat, can you hear us okay? All right, we'll come back to Miss Pat. Sophia, you've been on trainings with us since the beginning of the year. Talk to us a little bit about you and your company. Testing, one, two, three. We're either really shy or really Oh, mute. no, can you hear me now? I can. Hello? Okay, great, I'm sorry. I thought I had it on off the mute. Anyway, I am a writer and I have, uh, I'm working on my second book, the uh, 
which is the second in line with my self-development books. The second edition is actually will be completed by tomorrow, and I'm offering it free for five days from August 21st to 25th. It's on my Facebook page. And uh, all my, my three uh, self-development books, they will be transformed into a novels pretty soon. So that's who I am. And I love your webinars. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate having you. Soon you will have my website in your fingertips to, <laughs> to evolve into a higher plane of existence. But I'm saving up the money for that. <laughs> but we'll get it done. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for always showing up on these calls. I love having you. Thank you. All right, very good. Um, Meredith Rutledge with O'Brien Services. Muted. I still can't hear you. All right, you guys, I think, um, let's see here, Linda, you are on mute. If you want to unmute and introduce yourself. She's Meredith has no mic. Patty doesn't, Pat doesn't have a mic either. No problem. All right, you guys, well, let's go ahead and get started. Actually, Scott. Yes, I'm here. Hello, everyone. Thanks for attending. So Scott is um, head of our video production uh, team. If you guys have ever seen any of the videos uh, that we promote on a regular basis, whether it's for clients and so forth, that is this man's work. So um, he does everything from uh, animated videos, whiteboard videos, custom on-site uh, production videos, and really does incredible work and is a major player and, and a value asset to our team as well. So I appreciate everybody again. Um, for attending today. All right, let's get down to business. So um, hopefully you enjoyed today's training. We're going to get a little bit technical. Uh, so hopefully uh, you don't tune out while we're in the middle of the call. But we want to go through and talk a little bit about backlink. And I'm going to start from your worst case scenario, worst case position first. Um, if you take Google, Google essentially cares, and it, the Google Webmaster Requirements has hundreds and hundreds of different things that uh, it's analyzing. First and foremost is the structure of your website. How well is your website built? How much code is there? How much bloatware is there? Um, which is excess code that you may not be using. In the WordPress environment, um, many WordPress designers and developers develop websites with themes, typically because it's fast to get it to market. I'll show you a theme network so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. We're going to go to ThemeForest. I think it's .NET. Um, WordPress is a content management system. It's basically built on hooks, actions, and filters. It's an open source uh, environment. Let me see here. And I obviously don't go to theme Forest that often um, because we do everything from scratch, but helps to spell forest right. Yes. What are we supposed to be seeing on screen? So you should see uh, jenniferbagley.com on the right hand side and you should see theme forest on the left hand side. You may have uh, We're not tuned into anything on screen. Okay, so Kathy will send you a link real quick, which will help you get on to. I see you guys are just called into the phone number. She'll send you the link so you can get on onto the webinar. Send it, send it to Ramona's computer, would you? Sure will. All right, so Theme Forest essentially is a, a large group of developers that are building themes for websites. So everything you could possibly imagine is built in Theme Forest. Um, prices range of themes from six dollars to fifty, sixty dollars. And it's used by um, many, many, many people. So you can see this theme has 63 downloads. The challenge with using a theme or the, the drawbacks of using a theme really are um, bloatware, which is excess code that Google doesn't want to see. When Google's crawling any website, for example, um, I'll just scroll over here to jenniferbagley.com. I'm going to right click and inspect element. What Google wants to see is text. And um, text is going to be what it crawls in order to figure out who you are, what you do, what the page is about, and so forth. If you can imagine, um, everything inside Google is uh, a huge 
filing system. So when you pull up any search, and actually I'll just, um, I'll go pull a particular report. We'll go grab O'Brien real quick. So we're going to grab O'Brien's SEO report. And that'll kind of give you an idea. Everything in Google, it's like opening up a file drawer. If you can imagine um, a filing cabinet, and for each particular search phrase, for example, uh, heating and air conditioning or HVAC Wilmington, North Carolina, one page represents one thought. So if you were to hand a file, uh, to a receptionist and say, I want you to file this so somebody can find it in the future. Um, things like FAQ, our services, those kind of pages, they have no relevance to Google. It's just a big, we call them a junk drawer. Uh, an individual search, HVAC William, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, if we go to Google and we type in this particular search, Google is accessing a file drawer that has 180,000 pages inside this drawer. O'Brien happens to be position number one, page one, which is a great ranking. So here you'll see O'Brien. Now, as Google is analyzing each page on your website, it's determining what it should be filed as or which bucket it should be filed in. Out of the 180,000 pages inside this bucket, O'Brien is number one, page one, and it's their primary homepage. So sometimes you can gain additional pages uh, or additional listings depending on what that phrase is. I'll go back and I'll put in AC repair, and we're going to put in, um, let's see here, AC repair, Wilmington as well, and O'Brien owns page one, position one. Um, and also, this is their homepage that's doing that. So that's really good SEO when you can get your homepage. Typically what happens is you have to use your interior pages in order to gain rank for very specific searches. We'll go in, next one, AC Service, Wilmington, North Carolina. Again, they own position one, page one. So Meredith, I know you're over there smiling uh, greatly. <laughs> You've got a really good page placement for all of your key phrases. Um, there are different types of key phrases that are going to produce different types of results. There are also uh, prospects that are searching differently online. You have some prospects that are doing what I just did. They're going to Google and they're typing in uh, a particular service and possibly putting in a location as well. You have other types of searches, such as someone that pulls up or grabs their cell phone, presses the little voice command, and they may ask a question. What's the best? HVAC company in Wilmington, North Carolina. And that's going to produce a much, much different search. That's called mobile search engine optimization or voice to text. Now, in order for your website um, to be optimized, it's not just about creating blog content or pages and posts and so forth. I'm going to pull up just really quickly a, uh, an application that we use for all of our SEO projects. Um, that are on a little bit more aggressive programs, which is our, our SEO Moz system. Inside this system, it gives you the ability to determine how many visits, how many issues. So this is a crawl issue that's popping up. 50% of the pages have 404 errors, which is essentially this site just had a huge import from old blog content into a new site. And so we have two different websites that have similar URLs. They have an old blog they have on Blogger, and they have their all that same content now in their own space, in their own blog, which is going to present, present a lot of URL issues. So the team has to go through, and they've got to create what's called a 301 redirect for all of those pages so that Google understands who the original content author is and uh, which one they should credit as the primary follow link for that particular site. Part of SEO is creating content and labeling content. That is considered on-page optimization. You'll notice for O'Brien, the search uses the words air, conditioning, service, Wilmington, and NC. You'll notice inside their description in each one of these, this right here is called uh, 
your page title or your meta title. This is your URL. Anything past the forward slash, the first forward slash, for example, in this one, is considered a permalink. So when you're inside your WordPress account, I'm going to go to posts and I'm just pulling up my uh, Jennifer Bagley website. I'm going to pull up web design requirements, which is a post that we created last night. And I want to be able to relate each one of these so that you can see where this falls on Google. This is web design requirements, which you'll see is going to be a position here. This is going to be um, your permalink structure right here. So everything after the forward slash, these are the first two things Google is looking at. So if you create a page or a post, um, and the difference between a page and a post, a page is static, that would be considered more of a traditional website, that may be home, about us, our services, contact us, or a post which is dynamic, which means that post can be filtered and sifted and shown in multiple categories and there's an archiving functionality to it. So anything that you are going to do on a consistent basis is going to be a post, meaning you're going to add content frequently. A portfolio may be a post. Um, white papers may be a post. FAQs should be a post. If you see a page and it's titled, for example, if this was titled FAQ and this was titled jenniferbagley.com forward slash FAQ, the filing code that you're telling Google that you want this page to be filed under is the word FAQ. And we'll just pull up really quick what that gets you. If you were to create a page and title it FAQ, you guys will notice how many pages are in this drawer. That's a lot. Yes, over a billion pages. <coughs> that is a junk drawer. Same thing with the page called services. If I pull up services, again, 1.8. This is ridiculous. This is, we don't want to compete in this area. Now, you can alter your titles and you can start narrowing down the results. The goal for each one of you should be to find the search phrase with the highest number of monthly searches and the lowest amount of pages competing for that position. So if I said HVAC services, now you're down to 15,700,000 pages inside this drawer and our Mitsubishi cooling and, and heating HVAC company is on page one, position two. Google will also show the Google results from Google's business listing and that's going to be for local business owners um, and that's another training. So you'll notice whatever I search for here, you're going to see used in the title as well as the description, the permalink, and here I'm going to scroll down over here. Inside the back of your, your uh, WordPress account, you're going to have a little tool called WordPress SEO by Yoast. And it's going to give you a visual representation of how that post is going to display on Google. So this snippet preview, you'll notice this is aligned exactly like this snippet preview. This is exactly what Google is looking for. So if my focus key phrase is website design requirements, I'm going to use or front load this title inside my page title, my permalink, and I'm going to use it multiple times, and I'll just highlight these so you can see them, multiple times throughout the content. The ratio is you want to use your primary focal key phrase at least one per 100 words. So if you have a 300 word article, a 500 word article, you're either using it three to five times or better yet, we'll talk about Google's new requirements. 1500 words is now the standard for creating a, uh, and optimizing a page. They're wanting 1500 words on a particular page in order to be able to uh, validate that that's an authority post and so forth. So you'll notice a word count is right here. Now we're using this particular post primarily for the graphic, which we have a slideshow and we have an infographic and we're going to cover this as well. So first and foremost, on-page SEO is the title, the permalink, 
the use of H1 and H2 tags, which can be found under paragraph here. So this will automatically set as an H1 tag if your website is coded properly. Using H2 tags, for example, if I had this here and I said web design requirements and I converted this to an H2 heading, that's going to provide a second level uh, over. So I may put a different heading title on this. That's going to provide a second level that Google's going to crawl. These are the first three things that Google is looking at in order to properly categorize this particular post. Second is going to be analyzing the content. Readers typically are going to, or website visitors, are typically only going to scan the first couple sentences and couple paragraphs, depending on the type of site that you have. They may read the first two or three bullet points. When you're creating any kind of an article, there's different ways to create articles. There's text format, there's list format, there's um, top or best of. Some of the things to consider when you're creating your titles is going to be always front loading your key phrase. So if I want this to be a top 10 list or the three things to avoid, I would title this website requirements, top 10 uh, best practices. Versus saying the top 10 best practices for website design requirements. If you don't front load it, it's going to have less weight. So you always want to front load your titles with the most relevant key phrase for that particular article. And you'll notice for each page and each post, there's only one focus key phrase. Now, we're going to move into, let me move out of here. If your website is not coded properly, and um, I'm actually going to use the post that I did last night uh, as an example. So we're going to pull up this website design requirements post, which is the one that we were just editing. Here's my particular post. So we have a slideshow in there. And then let's go into, and I'm going to go ahead and expand this to make it bigger for you guys. We're going to go into, as far as the functionality of a website, what are the, uh, the most important elements outside of content? And these are kind of the basics. I'm actually going to take a second and mute you guys. So if you want to ask a question, you can do that in the chat box. Why a good website design is so important? These are stats and figures to prove it. So there's different things that are, are critical. You have your website. Right now, websites should be in an HTML5 format. What you're going to notice from an HTML5 format is that your website is coded with a responsive design. That means any uh, device that your website is opened on, it is going to automatically shape, shape shift that website to be able to render properly on any size screen. So you're going to notice as I'm moving this, I'm not scrolling over and losing the website. It's literally reshaping the website to fit on a mobile app, mobile device, or tablet. So this would be uh, on a phone, how it would render and display on a phone. It's going to modify all of your images, graphics. It's going to reshape uh, different elements. So notice this is actually a sidebar, but it's going to take the sidebar and it's going to drop it underneath that particular text. It's going to turn this into... Uh, one article on top of another, and so forth. That is an HTML5 or responsive, responsive website. Um, the difference in traffic and bounce rates from a responsive site versus a non-responsive site are massive. One is growing, one is dying. The next thing to consider is load time. Um, Astro, for you guys, you guys have a very heavy, graphically intensive website. Your new design has a tremendous amount of graphics. Load time is going to be something critical that we need to really, really watch. The longer your load time, the higher your bounce rate. The higher your bounce rate and lag time, which are two things Google is considering, uh, the less performance you have for your site. So if it's taking six, seven, eight seconds to be able to load a website, that's too long. We've got to have that load time drop down. Ramona and Bob, for you, that's important as well as you guys are creating articles and inputting video and images and so forth, making sure you have very compressed images and you have a clean site is important. Load time can be impacted by video. It can be impacted 
uh, by third-party applications. So let's say you have a YouTube file that's installed on your website. When your website loads and you have a YouTube video playing on the home page of your website, your website cannot load until the third-party API application or the third-party website publishes that element of content. So we want to be careful using third-party applications. Is it okay to have video on a website pulled from YouTube? Absolutely. But we don't want to have too much. If you have 10 or 12 or 15 videos on a particular page, that can create a, a, a long load time. Load time is broken into two different categories. You have load time and lag time. Load time is how long it takes that particular page to load. Lag time is how long does an individual stay on that page. If you have a page that only has one or two lines of text or one paragraph of text and a couple pictures, most likely somebody's going to glance at that and they're going to bounce. And that lag time shows that the website doesn't have enough content to be considered an authority. So. Is it more important to have 100 posts or 100 pages that are all short snippets of text based on a key phrase? Absolutely not. It's more important to have quality content with enough content that's going to produce a user that's going to stay on that page and they're going to study it. So for this particular page, it only had 202 words on it. However, we have a slide share that's 99 pages, so that's going to increase the time online and they can view it directly from here. We also have an infographic that people can study. So if you have a page that has a short amount of text, you need to be thinking about what kind of infographics can you guys use. Um, we're getting ready to post. We've got five infographic templates that uh, we're going to post. They're free to you guys to use if you want to do them yourself. If you need help creating infographics to display or show something specific regarding your site or your message or a particular thought or product or process, we'd be happy to help you with those as well. So that's load and lag time. Also, we're going to talk about color scheme, layout, and trust. As I mentioned earlier, Google cares about are you relevant, which has to do with the content, the labeling, and the text on the page. Um, as well as your, your meta tags, your meta descriptions, your titles, your tags, and your categories. It also cares about are you trusted? And that's the third element. So in an SEO project, it's not just about creating a blog post, optimizing the post, creating a blog post, and optimizing the post. You have to essentially go on a road trip with each one of the pages and posts that you have on your site. There's a few different ways to do that. Uh, social marketing, obviously being able to take that content, post it out to fan pages on Facebook, Twitter, Dig, Doug, StumblePun, Tetranati, and so forth. There's over 330 different social media sites that allow you to post content to them. Social media sites have a high authority rank. That higher the authority rank, the more valid um, that or the more authority or, or trust rank or page rank that that a particular article is going to have passed back to your website. Now, social is just one. Being able to create content that's post on, on uh, bookmarking sites, directory engines, uh, other third-party uh, industry association websites. The highest and most relevant uh, backlink that you can create would come from a relevant or high authority ranking website. So producing content that is um, quality enough that somebody is going to consider you an authority and they're going to reference back to your article or they're going to reference your website as an industry expert is going to be extremely important. Some of the SEO elements of off page or trust building backlinking can be done by an SEO company. Some of it needs to be done by you. In your industry, you have experts that uh, are heavy bloggers. They have a high authority rank personally, they have a high authority rank on your website. Being able to locate those individuals and include some of their content as a reference inside content you wrote um, is a way to be able to get them interested. You have to give first. So I may create an article and I may reference, for example, HubSpot, and I may reference an article that they created. If I write a good enough article that is endorsing this infographic and the article that they created, I can send this to my contact at HubSpot and say, hey, we really liked your article 
and we wrote a blog post about it. Can you check it out? Better yet, if you have a great relationship with them, you may send them an email that says, would you mind referencing this on one of your net, next blog posts and including a backlink? So that is the that is the, the most valuable tool you can have because you have to prove to Google that your website is not trusted by testimonials, is not trusted by online endorsements and video endorsements with somebody talking about how great your company is, but it's trusted by third-party valuable sites. So I'm going to pause for a minute on the trust factor, and I'm going to go through, and we're going to talk a little bit about what those, what we want to avoid. Sometimes we get in a situation where uh, we'll have a website that, or a project, an SEO project, and we go do the research. We, we initially say, let's go after, let's go do your your uh, um, your SEO, and we want to start off with making sure the website's built properly, great content. We want to optimize everything online and then boom, we get into the project and we go do research inside your webmaster or inside SEO Moz and we find out who's already linking to you. And this is a situation where um, we got into a project. This was an entry level project. However, once we pulled up uh, their links and did research to find out where their links were, they had over 9,000 website or 9,000 backlinks that had been created by either A, their prior SEO company, or B, a competitor. So analyzing who's linking to you is very important. I showed you this Moz report. This particular client, we have over 2,242 backlinks. Is that great? I don't know. It's going to depend where these backlinks are coming from. So these are external follow links. These are follow links with a root domain. Domain Moz rank, this is our trust rank, external links going out and coming in, and this is the total links. This is the follow links versus no follow links and so forth. It's not enough to say I have 100 backlinks or I have seven backlinks and giving you kind of a weight. It would be better to have five backlinks from credible websites than to have 5,000 backlinks like this. What's happening with this particular site is each one of these backlinks are junk sites. These are, um, you're typically going to find this if you contact an SEO company and you want a lot for a little, this is what's going to happen. And the danger to this is massive. The danger to this is literally having a website where you get gray listed or blacklisted for your own company name. We've seen situations and managed uh rebranding projects for company that literally had been in business for 20 years. This is a multi-million dollar company. And because they hired an SEO industry or SEO agency that went with a high volume of backlinks uh, for a low dollar price, literally they were completely blacklisted from Google to where when you put in the company name, they no longer showed up. So it no longer became how are we going to leverage our website in order to acquire new traffic and new visitors from a search. It became, oh my gosh, our customers can't even find us on online. So at that point, you're literally talking about a complete uh, brand change, a new website, and so forth. So the cost of doing this wrong far, far, far outweighs the cost of doing it right. So this is just a little sample of what happens if you jump on Odesk or Fiverr or some garbage site and say, get me some backlinks. Um, backlinks have to be created organically. And the only way you're going to get them is if you're creating content that's interesting and informational to other people. Now, in pulling up, let me just go back to re design requirements and I'm going to pull this up. Let's uh, continue here. We're going to go down to load time. What impacts uh, internet users the most? The number one thing that Im impacts internet users the most is going to be load time. When it comes to building traffic and keeping visitors, your load, your load time plays a primary role. 40% of web users leave the page that takes more than three seconds to load. Meantime, they will wait for two and a half seconds or so forth for a page to load. The impact on your website, as far as the amount of traffic, the growth of your website is substantially different the longer your, your page takes to load. And I will tell you from a design and development standpoint, this is not easy, especially if you have a website that's heavy, heavy in images. 
We've had projects where uh, a customer, we've battled and battled and battled about load time on a website, but they're so adamant um, that they want high quality, high res photos inside their site. They're willing, or they've made a decision to go with uh, a site that takes longer to load because they, that's, that's what they want. They want those particular, um, they want those particular load times. Another thing load times uh, impacts is your bounce rate. Is people coming to the website and bouncing. Now, uh, let's go through color scheme. Color scheme is an important element of, of your website as well. You'll notice that the colors you choose affect your site's performance. For me, we have this issue right now. We have a red brand. So we're redesigning our CI Web Group's brand and logo and so forth to incorporate other uh, other colors. And this is, this is important. And the more you get into A-B testing, this is something to consider as well. Having a uh, call to actions and so forth that are in red, no problem. Having an entire background in red, absolutely an issue. But you, as you go through, green is the best, blue, purple, orange, yellow, just in this simple uh, color scheme. Another thing to think about is uh, sites with dark colors versus light color schemes, meaning pastels versus uh, high energy tone websites. Next, we'll talk about layout. Most website users are looking at sites in two different formats. You have an F-shaped pattern where you have the block, your logo, your call to actions, your social media sites, your contact information, your header or slider, and then using these particular areas. And you also have a Z-shaped uh, reading pattern. So going through and knowing what style of format um, is very important. Also, remember, you have two people you're trying to, well, I shouldn't even say people, you have two audiences you're trying to impress. Your first audience you need to impress is Google, which means Google Webmaster requirements are going to be more important than anything when you first start out. And the second is you need to impress people. Site visitors concentrate on the first two paragraphs, so that needs to be where you put the most of your weight. Mostly scan a first few sentences of a subheading or a bullet point. So it's very important. They're making up their mind and deciding if they want to do business with you with the first couple sentences of text and making sure you have a quick and easy and clear call to action so that we can convert those consumers into a potential prospect as well. Um, bullet point lists, when you're creating content, bullet point lists are fantastic. 70% of people... Um, look at, at lists when they're in a bullet point format, only 55% of them pay attention to them if they're not in a bullet point format. So that's something simple you can easily add in. Uh, next, we'll talk trust, and this is more regards to design. Um, website design can imp uh, impact uh, whether somebody trusts your site. 94% of people cite the design as the first reason they don't trust a website. If your website look at, looks like it was built by we call them the triple F's, friends, family, and fools. While we appreciate the fact that you may have used Photoshop or, um, or, or learned how to use Photoshop or a free derivative of that, um, or that you gave the business to uh, you know, your, your single person company in, inside your chamber, or you let your, your budding uh, uh, nephew design your website, these are things you want to avoid. Again, the cost of doing it wrong far outweighs the cost of doing it right. Instantly, when somebody is coming to your site, there's a visual representation and there's a big difference. I'm just going to use an example. Um, I love this client. I know she won't mind using this example, but I want to show you uh, the difference. I'm going to pull up um, somebody that's in production. When you build your own stuff or design your own stuff, people can tell the difference. They can see the difference. Um, even when you look at it in your own light and you've created this great visual graphic you want to use and so forth, and you spend all this time putting it together with your bubble font and possible um, shadows and effects and so forth, there's a huge, huge, huge difference between, between something that has been professionally designed and something that's been done by yourself. For this particular project, you'll notice the first website, 
this woman is amazing. Tremendous amount of content, lots of things wrong with the website, the design, the look, and so forth. Also, notice this. Remember we were talking about permalink structures and needing good titles. The titles of these pages not only are not Google's preferred URL structure, but also are simply full of junk. There's nothing of value in here. So the likelihood of this having any input on Google versus if we were to go to something that says forward slash indoor air quality, there's a significant, significant difference. Uh, I'll give you another example. And I'm sure if you were a consumer and you were glancing at these two sites and you've got to realize your customers um, are most likely going to not one or two or three, but multiple different websites and they're doing an instant comparison without reading any of your text. They're not reading any of your, your uh, awards. They're not reading anything uh, within your testimonials page, which you'll notice is way down here. They're not reading that content. They are making a visual uh, decision instantly. So making sure that you are using great imagery, clear calls to actions, great white space, and you're speaking directly to a human, a person in your design is going to be very, very important. I'll give you another example. We're going to pull up a website we just launched for DFW security. I'm going to go do a quick Google search for Dallas. Actually, let's do alarm. <clears throat> and we're going to go pull this site up. So in this situation, you have two choices, DFW alarm or DFW security. My guess is this company looks like it's possibly ran or, or, or one person or a two person shop. This looks like a professional business. So design is going to play a huge role when you're looking at your website and you're making your own evaluation and determination on what it looks like. Try and pull yourself out, out of your own eyes and look at it as a consumer that's comparing your website to other people's to make a decision. All things created equal, DFW security is going to get the business every time. All right, let's um, head back. Hopefully those are good um, examples of, of how design plays a role in your business. We talked through layout and trust. HTML5, we talked about the ability to um, have a site that is responsive. So I just want to show you the difference. On this particular site, if you pull this site up, they've attempted to do some responsive coding, but they've done it themselves or had somebody else do it. You'll notice that what it does if you pull this site up on somebody's mobile phone is it shrinks it down to this little tiny, tiny, tiny text and immediately you've lost um, that mobile user. With the, I don't have to stress um, any stats and figures and statistics on uh, mobile views. Um, quite simply, it doesn't matter if you're sitting in a restaurant or a kid's play or at a conference or you're sitting in a movie theater getting uh, scolded about turning your cell phones off. Um, you know the value of having a mobile responsive website. Next, I'll go to DFW Security so you can see the difference. Notice it's reshaping itself literally designing hundreds of style sheets that meet any uh, device's needs. And this is a sample. Very clear, maintains aspect ratio, and uh, allows for easy searching on any mobile device. All right, um, those are your primary. So as far as uh, things to consider, the design of your website, the infrastructure of your website, how mobile your website is, uh, the content that you're placing on there and so forth and making sure that you make extremely good decisions when it comes to search engine optimization and you have a reasonable expectation as far as what it takes to optimize a particular website. Part of the website's um, SEO process, we talked a little bit about creating content, optimizing that content with proper URL structures, permalinks, uh, meta descriptions, H1s, tags, using that text throughout the particular blog post. That is considered on-page search engine optimization. We've also talked a little bit about evaluating websites to determine what's been done. Um, for those of you that may wonder, if you have external backlinks uh, that are not favorable, 
um, you can get rid of them. So it's not about my competitors. They can go and they can create 5,000 backlinks that are going to derank and devalue my website. That is possible if you're not paying attention or if you don't have an agency that's paying attention. Once you, uh, and so this is something you need to check on a regular basis. If you're managing your own site, you need to be looking at Google's webmaster requirements. Uh, if your site's being managed, then your SEO agency should be glancing at these for you and should be reporting any additional work that needs to be done in order to play some defensive actions. Once this uh, is found, you have to go and dispute it. So you are now going to Google and you're disavowing or disallowing those particular links. You have to submit uh, a request to Google that can take anywhere between a week and a month for them to be able to get back with you, depending on the volume and the difficultiness uh, of your request. So very, very important. All right, now, um, inside your um, SEO uh, evaluation, you also need to be looking at your trust rank and authority on social media sites. First and foremost is going to be Google+. Google implemented, um, Google implemented a... Uh, an evaluation that is essentially your authority rank as an, indiv as an individual blogger uh, that's tagged on now to the authority rank of your website. So your website has uh, your page rank, your authority rank, and your individual page authority rank on each particular page. That is heavily uh, impacted by your uh your personal or your individual. So each one of you on your website, you need to create a blogger. The blogger is going to be an individual profile. So if I jump into WordPress, I'm going to go to the dashboard and I'm going to go down to users. And these are the particular users on this profile. So you'll notice my user account is my Gmail account. My Gmail account is attached to my Google Plus page, which has, is attached to my Google Plus business page, and it's also attached to things like my social media accounts. So if I go to Facebook, my Gmail account is attached to Facebook. It's all connected. I have my personal page. On my personal page, I'm sitting at 4,999 um, connections or friends. Uh, you can only have 5,000 on a personal page, so you always want to think about in your growth. I have 7,738 followers, so when this gets to, to 5,000, which I delete people every day in, in the dozens, uh, and it continues to increase depending on my interaction and so forth, but if they can't follow you or if they can't friend you on a personal page, the next thing they'll do is they will follow you, and so you can see the follows there. Next is going to be your fan pages. So we manage a lot of fan pages account. This is my personal fan page. So primarily used for speaking. So you'll notice we have 6,529 likes. The benefit to this is, for example, let's say you have a search phrase that you really, really want to get ranked for, but this thing is competitive. It's difficult. Um, or it's outside of your, um, it's outside of your category. So the more niche, your website is, uh, the higher weighted and easier it is to be able to get that website to be ranked. For example, if you're an HVAC company, but you also do home automation, security systems, pool installations, and furnace installs or repairs, that's going to be an extremely difficult website because it's so out of niche. However, if you make one website for your home automation and security system company, one website for your HVAC, it sounds like there's more cost because you have two development projects, but the long-term costs are much, much, much less because of two things. One, because that website can be optimized and categorized, and so you have a smaller monthly investment to be able to get a quicker rank for your SEO like this, a first page position. Meredith, I'm gonna go check. I wanna see where you guys are now. 
so 818. So Meredith, congratulations. You are first page of Google for every search result and holding tight. They've got a little bit of work on Yahoo and Bing. <laughs> but we can get um, your primary key phrases to a first page position and hold that rank longer. That's one expense that's, that's less. You may have two SEO plans going on. The second expense that is going to be less is actually um, your, your revenue. If you have a website that takes six months to get to the front page of Google instead of 60 days, which let's see here, you are, you're probably four months into this and you're on page one of Google for all your primary searches. Now it's a matter of holding rank for these and then adding additional uh, key phrases as you want to, um, as you want to get ranked for a particular another field. But if you can get to the first page of Google, get your phone to ring and start making money, then of course that's going against the initial investment that you have. So that's a much smarter strategy than taking a website and having it sit in the back of the, uh, the back of the search um, queue for a long time and not generating any revenue. So the faster you can get something to market, generate new leads and opportunities, convert those leads and opportunities into cash flow. Uh, the quicker that that investment starts to become not an investment uh, or starts to become profitable, I should say. All right. Um, now let's talk niche. I'm going to go into a blog. I just created this. I think we're good. We've got an email newsletter coming out soon. Um, that's going to talk a little bit about, or it's going to have a link to each one of these in there, or you can go to jenniferbagley.com, click on learning. Um, the next one we're going to go through is niche SEO ideas. Focus on one niche to succeed with SEO. All right, so I made a list. These are some of the things we talked about. Is your website built properly? Is it responsive? Are your permalink structured? Do you have 301 redirects on your URL? Do you have one page per product or service? Do you have significantly more text than HTML? So if you have a poorly coded website, are you using a theme? Uh, you probably have a lot more HTML than you need. You need uh, a developer to strip all that HTML out, custom design you a website that's coded without all that extra garbage you're not using. If you buy a theme or download a theme, it's going to come up, it's going to have tons of bells and whistles and parallax and different sliders and eight different formats. You don't need all that. You need to strip it down to its core and only have code on your site for what's needed and that you're going to use, which is why custom design is critical. Do you have backlinks already? Do you know what your backlinks are? Do you know where they come from? And what are you doing to go after new ones? Are your assets or are your backlinks an asset, a liability, or are they not? Um, trading backlinks with a friend from school? No. Trading with a colleague? No. Unless you know the authority rank, the popularity rank, and the trust rank for a particular website, do not trade backlinks. Um, can you easily make changes to your websites? Do you have typos, broken links, slow load times? Do you have call to actions and so forth? Tons of information. So talking about a niche, um, let me see if I can give you some examples. Actually, here's an example down here. <clears throat> Let's say that you're, um, you do landscaping and exterior design and each of you has category or each of you has things like this. Instead of focusing on exterior landscape and design, pick one niche, make some money from it and then pick another one. So I may focus on only patio designs. Um, and specifically patio covers. So your consumers that uh, are out there looking for ideas and doing research are looking for different ideas for patio covers. So having a, an article that's titled patio design ideas, top five ideas for patio covers, you can optimize for both patio design ideas and patio covers. And next one, if you want to focus on pavers, Patio design ideas, top three pavers for your patio versus focusing on a hard key phrase like exterior design. So inside your business thinking about if this is an attorney, if you're trying to optimize your site for the word lawyer versus personal injury lawyer or even better, personal injury lawyer, how to choose the best or top five questions to ask a personal injury lawyer, you'll notice that the key phrase is front loaded on the site or on the front of the, the front of the title, personal injury, personal injury lawyer, top five questions to ask, top five things to avoid, top five things to consider, best three interior um, design companies in Dallas. Think about best of, top five, what to avoid, what to consider. Think about the types of questions that your customers ask on a regular basis 
that is a niche. If your customer, if you're an HVAC site and your customers are asking, what's the difference in ductless and duck in? That's a question and that needs to be an individual blog title. So on your site, you're going to have pages that are um, sales pages. This is a great example. We'll pull air care systems, for example. These are their sales pages and you're gonna have multiple variations. Um, actually, I've got a variation chart we just did. Who was this? Folks, let's see here. So doing some analysis for this client, we have top level key phrases, which are furnace, oil and gas, HVAC, ductless, heating, boiler and burner, and indoor air quality. You're also going to have variations. If you go to Google and you type in HVAC, company, um, you can scoop down here to the very bottom and you're actually going to have a list indicators. These are great things to look for to see if you can come up with ideas. If Google is recommending it, that means it's searched on a regular basis. HVAC company websites, air conditioning company, and so forth. So instead of just doing HVAC, typing something that said or having a page or a post titled air conditioning company and so forth. So this is a top level search phrase. Getting found for the word HVAC, your competitors, let's just glance at this real quick. Go, go, go. 426,000. If I type in AC, 638,000. Uh, let's do ductless. 1.1 million. So you want to start playing around with these. Now, if I say what is ductless air conditioning, I drop it down to 997,000. If I say what are the benefits of, you're going to notice this title, five benefits of a ductless air conditioning system the benefits of going ductless notice how each of the titles these are longer phrases so you have top level searches and then you have variations variations in this industry is installation repair maintenance service warranty uh, faqs and so forth so each one of these variations and then you're going to have questions and questions are going to be something um, you want to take a look at so you'll notice seven advantages so what I would do in this case, um, they're not getting as much credit because they're on a subdomain, but I would title this ductless air conditioners, seven advantages to consider. Uh, simple ductless, benefits of ductless air conditioning. So you guys, when you're coming up with article um, examples, for our clients, we have made them, let me see if I can find this. Okay, perfect. So our clients, we made them a, um, a spreadsheet that allows you to see what's trending right now. So you can go put in any search phrase. So I'll put in brake metal for Astro. And this spreadsheet is going to go to Google. It's going to analyze, and we're still, this is a beta, so we're working on a lot of these to try and pull the data. But we're looking at the top and the best media sites out there to see what's trending the most. So this is going to pull out um, things that are related to this particular key phrase. If it pulls out stuff that's not similar, then you're going to want to keep narrowing down your search. So if I say um, HVA, you think I know that by now. So I can pull any of this. If you guys, if you're a client, you're on the phone and you don't have one of these yet, uh, just let me know and we'll go ahead and pull these. But this will give you ideas for content as well as just simply going to Google. So you can see um, people were questioning 95 year old home, uh, questions about ductless air conditioning, maintenance for ductless ACs, uh, ductless upgrades. So you can see for each one of these sites what's trending and it'll give you ideas on what you can use as well. I'm gonna say, Gun news. So for gun news, this is instantly going to crawl and it's going to pull. These are some of the top articles that are trending on these particular sites that we have it programmed to pull from. 
All right, you guys, I know this is a lot of information. Um, I'm going to wrap up with one small um, report because I want you to get an idea of the things that you want to track. Um, this is something that we track for our, our marketing programs. Uh, one is your, your SEO grade. After evaluating dozens and dozens and dozens uh, of different things, doing a complete forensics on your site, complete forensics on your webmaster um, requirements, uh, that's going to be something that we evaluate. So you may rank number one for your top key phrases, but there's always room for improvement. Um, also, you've got to be aware that if you uh, go do business with an HVA or excuse me, with an SEO agency, um, there's a lot of things they can't see to be able to quote. So if they, if you get a quote for a project and they were talking about a progressive uh, SEO strategy on what are the things we're going to do in order to move you forward. They get into the project, they pull up your website, and the next thing they know is you have tons of duplicate content. Um, you have 404 errors, you have missing links, you have poorly coded site, you have HTML issues, you have spelling issues on your text. Um, if they start finding all of these things, you're looking at a reevaluation of your project because you're going to need to go do some damage control. And then you're going to need to reevaluate so you can move forward. The last thing you want to do is be doing forward movement uh, activities from an SEO and marketing standpoint, only to find out that you're being held back by uh, some evaluations or some issues that are causing your evaluation ranking and authority to be impacted. Um, some other things, your speed score, load time, your world rank, the number of backlinks, how many index pages, how many shares and likes. This is part of, if you are a... Um, if your website is being evaluated, part of what Google's evaluating is do other people trust you? The way to get that is through shares, likes, comments, reposts, retweets, uh, digs, and so forth. Also, what are the top key phrases? Not based on what you want to go get, but based on the content that's on your page, what is the frequency of the key phrases you're looking? So for this particular site, Tracking is used 36 times. Fleet is used 28 times. GPS is used 15 times. That is not nearly enough. Uh, content or frequency of these particular key phrases to be used to be able to gain rank. So content is going to be first and foremost important here. Third party um, optimization is going to be next. Next, two word key phrases. How many times are you using these key phrases? So this is what I mean by niche. Pick one niche. Focus on it for a long enough time frame. You can create enough quality content that you can really, really make some progress in that particular area. Uh, if you gain a page one rank for a particular thread or a particular title, for example, oil and gas uh, conversions or furnace tune-ups, the next thing I want to do is I want to pick one of these niches and I want to stay 100% focused on it so I have the top 10, top 50, top 100 questions uh, or things people consider best of, things to avoid and so forth. I want to nail those down in my blog post. The more you do that, the more real estate you own, the more searches you own, long text searches, short text searches, as well as voice to text searches. Um, the more relevant something is, the densely or more densely used that particular key phrase is within your content on your site, the better results we can get from all of our on-page, off-page uh, optimization, and the more business it's going to create, the more leads and opportunities, the more... Uh, opportunities you're going to have to close that business. So these are just some of the things that you want to look at. Um, it's not just about loading your HTML. If you're using a theme, um, most likely you've got messy style sheets. Uh, your style sheets alone, which is how your site renders and displays your H1, H2, H3, H4, your body text and so forth. It's what are all the standard code um, descriptors that are used to be able to render each one of those in a particular format. Images may be loading long, script may be loading long, and other coding things. So when you're looking at load time, it's not just about that pulling up. HTML can play a big role in that. I've seen a lot of themes that are heavy on HTML. There's actually a higher percentage of HTML than there is a, a text on the site. We don't want to do that. Next is going to be um, your social indicators. So Google is not just evaluating your social indicators on your home page. It's evaluating what people's interactions are with each individual post that you post. So as you have people that are <coughs> um, posting content, um, making sure that um, you have SEO commenting on all of your posts, that you have the ability to um, share or show, excuse me, show shares 
So I'll give you an example um, very quickly on an article posted a couple days ago. Jennifer Bagley, this, this particular site is a newer site, um, and so we're just starting to focus on this particular one. But this is what you want to see, and it's measuring this at the individual post level. You want to see people retweeting, sharing, recommending comments on all of your posts and so forth. Um, and this is where this particular thing comes in. And then finally, when you get into it, you also want to be able to do a competitor analysis. So for each one of our uh, reports, we'll also put in their competitors. And that way we can get an idea for your particular area, your particular niche. How is your website ranking up to them? And you can also get awesome blog ideas uh, from your comp what your competitors are doing as well. You guys, with that, I hope this information is um, valuable. I know it's a lot to soak in. Uh, just keep coming back to training. I know people that started off and all this, they felt like they were drinking from a fire hose. Next thing you know, they're starting to talk in a similar language. Their questions are getting better. The answers they get are getting better. And so just stay focused. Um, this is a lifestyle. It's not a project. Building a website, gaining page rank, an SEO project, social media project. It literally is a lifestyle. So we've got to change our uh change our thought process, our, our patterns, our behaviors, and so forth in order to be able to uh, really perform continuously. Um, the biggest thing I'll leave you with is this is not about change. We are living in an era where change is occurring every single day. Um, nothing is static. Nothing is permanent. Uh, what I'm telling you right now, quite frankly, depending on when you're listening uh, to this, uh, what I'm telling you may be dead wrong. And so I'm throwing that out there as my disclaimer because this is going on video. So uh, if this is two days later and Google makes a, a pretty significant change or a search engine does or one social media uh, site becomes more powerful or heavily weighted than something else or a social site gets bought by a bigger company, whatever that situation is, the landscape of marketing, search engine optimization, social media marketing, video marketing, mobile marketing is going to change. It is in flux. So the best thing you can hold on to, when you want to hold on to something that you don't want to change, that's your identity. It's who you are, not what you do. So make sure that if you want to hold on to something, again, your identity, who you are, what your corporation or your company was founded on, that's something you want to keep intact. That is your culture. Uh, it needs to, your culture and your identity needs to show through in all of your content, on your blogs, your websites, your social sites. There needs to be a consistent feel for the way that you function, the way that you operate. People know us um, as educators. We love to constantly educate and inform. In our mind, an educated customer is a much better customer to work with, so we spend a lot of time doing that. What are you known for? If you, are, if you have a clear and distinct culture and identity, that identity has got to flow through all of the different virtual mediums, print mediums, and marketing mediums that uh, you're using within your own website. With that, you guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Next week, we're going to have a killer, killer training. Uh, we're going to be focused on how to advance your website's traffic as well as your uh, social media engagement and endorsements through the most awesome email marketing system you could imagine. And it's free. I hope you have a great, uh, great week. Make it a productive one and we'll see you next week.